This week we're at Dwight Jones in South Georgia on his property, which is turkey hunting Fantasy Island. To me, an outlander is somebody that gets out there and hunts year-round, fishes year-round. I mean, it's just part of who they are. It's what they're known for. Me and my boys are that way. Now, Dwight is a family man and a father of three boys and a second-generation real estate developer, but he is a fanatical turkey hunter. I love to turkey hunt. I've been hunting them nearly 30 years, and golly, I, I am just obsessed with it. This property is about 3,000 acres. It's bordered by some notable plantations. The particular track we have has diversity in that it has irrigated farmland, about 1,000 acres, that has different types of crops and also a food source for the turkey, deer, and other animals. We also have a fair amount of water, nearly 200 acres actually on this property. It's just unbelievable how much game there is down there. But this place literally has it all. My oldest son, Connor, is going to join us. We're actually going to split up. Connor will go a different route and see what he can do. I'll continue to stay with Blake. We'll work together as a team and see what we can do. So we're gonna head back to where he went yesterday to see if we can get a shot at him today. So it should be a good morning. It's pretty windy, so you have to listen really hard. This morning, we were facing some pretty heavy winds. Privately, I felt like we'd be lucky to get on a bird today. We decided just to go set up in a strut zone that we've historically known about and see what we could do to work a bird. The wind is about 80% less back here. If I were a turkey, this is where I'm gonna come out. We can set up right on the edge and just make sure we're behind a little bit of cover. Should be good, so we'll go ahead and, we'll go ahead and ease in. Man, with the wind, if a gobbler had been gobbling, I just don't think he would have even heard him. Hopefully we can get one to come in. And, uh, it's been real windy, so they haven't been gobbling, but we're gonna do our best to call him. Didn't have any responses, didn't know, you know, how it was gonna turn out with this weather. Probably. I was thinking it wasn't really going to work out for us this morning. We worked the area. We did some aggressive calling, used our friction calls, loud mouth calls, everything that I know to try and get a bird within range. It didn't work. All of a sudden, I looked up in the corner of the field. I saw a turkey come in. I didn't know if it was a hen or a gobbler. There's a bird coming in the back corner right here. came in and looked around. He didn't see anything. We didn't have decoys out. Luckily, this was a kind of a curious bird. He was giving the look like he was about to head out. We got him on the ground. Decent spurs, two beards. I didn't really notice it at first. I thought I heard a gunshot back to the north, but wasn't completely sure. All right, let's head that way. Let's unload. We rode back. Lo and behold, there's a bird laying on the ground. Connor, my firstborn, connected with a two or three year old bird. It was Connor's first multiple beard bird. Blake has had one before. I've had one myself, so maybe we're in some kind of exclusive club. I'm down here solo. The boys had to head back home. They have school tomorrow and some homework. I'm an outlander. The kids are gone. I'm taking it up a notch. There's a bird that I've been working since early season. He's given us the slip twice. I'm taking it personal. I'm going to commit the rest of the show to go after this bird and this bird alone. This 
This is the same spot. This bird was in this driving rain yesterday. Lo and behold, there he was. This bird, he wasn't strutting. He certainly wasn't gobbling. He was milling around. Definitely our gobbler. Let's see if he establishes a course. This is a very smart bird. He, he knows his way around. Come on, bird, make a move. Let us know what you're going to do. So here's my dilemma. Can't make a straight approach, obviously, because he'd see us. Just sitting there. He's just bugging, you know? This bird is really miffing me about how to work him. I made some difficult decisions about what to do. See about bootlegging through this big timber. He's acting kind of squirrely. Man, this bird ticks me off. This bird has done it to me. He's got under my skin. You know, the other option we got is if he, uh... Right now, I'm just struggling. Do I move on this bird? Risk bumping him? Now he's going into the timber. He's 30 yards into big timber. Wow. Time didn't cooperate with us. The bird actually started to move off towards the northeast. Decided the best decision was to back off, know that this bird is in the area, and that he'll be roosting there in the morning. We woke up this morning, more high winds and abnormally cool temperatures. In Georgia, you get three gobbler tags. I'm down to my last tag, which will be my third. I'm on the third day of the show. Man, I would love it if this would come together this morning. See where my old nemesis is, and hopefully we won't freeze to death in the meantime. I've learned the hard way. You can't just walk into these pines and walk down where you think they gotta be. You really gotta be cautious or you'll bump them out of the tree. When you have a drastic cold front come through like this, sometimes they just clam up. This wind, we may not get a gobble out of this bird. We may be in for a long set. We'll just go ahead and set up and just wait and see what happens. Well, seven o'clock comes. It's time to have some fly down. Oh, we're hearing some crows. We left this bird last night at 6.30. He was heading towards the southeast, towards the roost. He's got to be fairly close. Not a peep. We hadn't heard a peep from him or any other bird. It was a huge risk for me after the boys left to commit to killing just this one bird. But I felt good about it. I felt like I could make it happen. That's the forecast today for 12 o'clock. 15 miles an hour is going to be cooking. We got to make this happen this morning. We got to get this bird out of here before this wind gets up. Wait, I think there he is. Yeah, yeah, it's him, it's him. He's coming, he's coming. And in almost 30 years of turkey hunting, I saw something I've never seen before and I hope I never see again. He started running. And I mean, I've never seen a turkey run like this. Not a little bit of a beard swing, but bionic man beard swing and hitting him in the neck. Well, he's stopping, he's stopping, he's gobbling. He stopped maybe two times and gave a casual gobble. Seriously? That bird is in a full sprint. And it's like he's training for the Olympics. I tried to stop him. I was calling into the wind, even gave him a fan but he never saw it. He was looking into the sun. This bird is absolutely loco. I mean, something's wrong with what he's got. Look at him, he's gobbling. He is toting the mail. Now he stopped, he stopped. He's gobbling. Man, to see him boogie out of there like that, it, it just crushed me. At least he got himself a nickname. I named this bird Boogie Bird. Well, I think he's going to come back here at some point. The question is where? I'm like, you know, why did this bird get out of there like his hair was on fire and his pants were catching? 
I honestly don't know. In my experience, only two things, and that would be if something were chasing or if something really spooked him. Gotta give it to Dwight for his determination because despite the wind and despite this bird not really responding, he's sticking with it. We'll gonna try a few different tactics. We brought Henny Penny, our decoy. Based on this bird acting this morning, I think that may get his attention. Wind's still pretty tough, so calling is just not a great option. I'm gonna resort to basically deer hunting for this gobbler. We're gonna go back down to where he seems to want to be in the late afternoon. He seemed to mill around a pretty wide range, maybe 200 yards. So picking out a setup spot was pretty tricky. There's an old deer stand that was on the property before we bought it. It's structurally sound and safe, but it's covered with vines. I felt pretty confident this bird was gonna come back in the area. for almost five hours. It was pretty, pretty brutal. I mean, it was almost like a deer hunt without seeing anything. And I was just about to give up hope that this bird was even gonna come back today. I look back to the west, and lo and behold, Boogie Boy is on top of the ridge heading this way. Clearly, he saw the hen decoy. It's pushing 6 p.m. Man, this bird is crazy. He, he's being a little cautious. The bird moved out of my field of view. He's going around this point, I can't see him. It was my worst nightmare realized. I thought, good heavens, this bird has started coming in. He's seen this hen deke, it spooked him, and now he's simply going straight to the roost. We were this close. After a few more seconds, thankfully, he pops out behind the point and comes around and really starts to come in. I'm gonna let him get close. Normally, I'm not really under pressure when I turkey hunt, but boy, I was feeling it now. He got about a foot and a half from the decoy, and he is so smart, he quickly realized this was not a real hen. Definitely boogie boy. Oh, me. This bird did not have a fan at all. It almost looks like, like something chomped on it. See how that's, that's broke? It looks like maybe in the chase that ensued, whatever predator it might have been got the better of this turkey's fan out. So it probably explains, at least for me, why this bird was toting the mail when he came through that field that morning. I am thrilled with him. He'll be probably one of the most memorable trophies that I've had in my career to this point or ever again. This was a tough hunt under very tough circumstances. And I'm honored and privileged to be a part of it. And the best part was being able to call mom and the kids and let them know we'd have more fresh turkey for supper. I hope that you will see Southwest Georgia in a way maybe you've never seen it and just how beautiful a place it is. Would I do this again? Absolutely. You know, I'm serious about my faith, I'm serious about my family, and I'm serious about my work. But brother, you better believe I'm serious about my hunting and fishing.